Please, Darcy, and I'll welcome everybody again. So we want to welcome everybody who's in the building, those of you who are watching online to our service this morning. A warm welcome to you. It's a bit damp and dreary outside, uh, but never mind. Uh, never mind. We're here in the presence of God. Here in church this morning, we shall be celebrating uh, the sacrament of Holy uh, Communion. And we hope those of you who are watching this at home or listening on these CDs will also be able to appreciate something of what God has done for us in Jesus Christ. Our theme today is the fact that it's Father's Day. So we'll be thinking of what does it mean that God is our Father. And we have some words from Psalm 103 that speak to us of that. The psalmist writes, As a father has compassion on his children, so the Lord has compassion on those who fear. For he knows how we are formed. He remembers that we are dust. The Lord has established his throne in heaven, and his kingdom rules over all. Praise the Lord, you his angels, you mighty ones who do his bidding, who obey his word. Praise the Lord, all his heavenly hosts, you his servants who do his will. Praise the Lord, all his works, everywhere in his dominion. And we're going to do that. Those of us who are in the building, we have to sit and listen and just reflect on the words. The hymn is, Praise my soul. We do exactly what the psalmist says. Praise my soul, the King of heaven. In verse 3, Father-like, he tends and spares us well our feeble frame he knows. Thank you, John. Good things 
that have been in our life over this last week. The fact that Father like he tends and spares us. Well, our feeble frame he knows. Thank you, Lord, that you are our creator. You are our sustainer. You know us so intimately, for you knit us together in our mother's womb. So we thank you that you are our creator. We thank you that you love us with that unconditional love. That you have sent your son Jesus to show us what it means to love in all its fullness. And we remember that Jesus himself knew you and knew the Father's love and expressed that to others as well as knew it in his own heart while he was here on earth. And he constantly referred to you as Father. He would go away to quiet places to be at one with his heavenly Father. And in those moments of um, stress, in those moments, those pinch points, he would go to you as Father. We come to you this morning as our heavenly Father. And as you know our feeble frames, you know that we don't get it right. There are times when we let you down as our Heavenly Father. There are times when we assume your Father's love but stray away in terms of the way in which we live our lives, the things we say, the things we do. And so we come to you in that context of your unconditional love to say sorry for those things that we have done which have not reflected the fact that we are your children but not just to say sorry but to come with a determination not to do those things again so that our relationship with you can be restored with nothing in between us so we're able to enjoy this incredible relationship we have offered by you. And so Lord, have mercy upon us, pardon and deliver us from all of our sins, and help us to walk in the footsteps of you as our Heavenly Father, whom we know in Jesus Christ, our Lord and Saviour. Amen. So we hear our reading for this morning from Ephesians in chapter 1. Thank you. to bring unity to all things in heaven and on earth 
that is in Christ. Amen. And so some of us will notice today that it's Father's Day. Others may not. It may be news to you, as it were, because it doesn't concern you or whatever. Uh, but we all have one thing in common. We all have uh, fathers. We all have uh, fathers. And so this is an important day uh, for many uh, people. Um, I've already had my uh, uh, very well prepared and cooked uh, cooked breakfast. I very rarely have that on a Sunday, but on Father's Day, but it would be impolite for me to refuse it, wouldn't it, really, uh, from my daughter. Um, I've also had um, my uh, card. Um, I'll see Mark later on, see what he has to do. Uh, so the card uh, from my daughter, uh, which you won't be able to see, really, uh, but it's a picture of a man in his comfy slippers, in his comfy armchair, uh, fast asleep, and somebody is saying in the room, uh, oh, he's got the uh, TV remote control in his hand. Uh, somebody is saying in the room, can I change the channel? Uh, to which the father in the chair is saying, no, I'm watching it. <laughs> there we are, that is that. Uh, and uh, one of the things that very kind gift she's got, I've just tried to work this out, is a new face covering, and the new face covering has the Arsenal crest done. I'm just wondering how appropriate that might be if I do a funeral in one of these. It may not be appropriate, do you think? Uh, in that, although some would argue it's been a funeral at Arsenal for the last season altogether, uh, but that's another subject for another day. Well, I'm guessing those uh, online who are watching this, maybe some of us, are able today to mark this important day. For some of us, it's a great day of joy. Uh, for others, it's a day of sadness, maybe, as we reflect on our relationship with our fathers, whether that be past or present. And it brings, I suppose, very much like Mother's Day, it brings a mixture of emotions uh, for people on such uh, a day. As a day itself, it was only really, uh, as it were, invented. It was uh, it came from America, and uh, the historians tell us that it only came across to England in about 1910. But I don't know about you, but it seems to me, certainly in my lifetime, it's only been something that's marked maybe in the last, what, 30, 40 years? I don't remember as a child, as it were, giving, uh, making something of Father's Day for my father, but maybe that was just me, I don't know. Uh, but it just seems more recent than 1910 that we have uh, uh, been celebrating uh, this. But as I say, like Mother's Day, it brings a mixture of feelings for different people. For those with positive memories and experiences of their father, it's a day to give thanks and express appreciation. If they're still alive, that can be done with gifts or cards that are supposed to be funny, uh, or whatever it might be. For others of us, if our fathers are no longer here, we can perhaps spend some time today reflecting on what they did for us uh, and hopefully with time that has been a positive uh, memory for us in that sense. But for others it may not bring good memories, it may not bring good experiences of their fathers. It's not a day of celebration and they don't want to mark it at all, it's to be forgotten and that is sadly, sadly the case for many people because it brings back painful memories. Or maybe you're somewhere in the middle of those two uh, scenarios that we are talking about. For those for whom Father's Day is not a positive experience, they then have challenges when in the Christian faith we talk about God as our Father. That's a really challenging concept. And if you think about it, how many times we use that image because, of course, in Scripture, it's, it's all over the place, as it were, in a very male-dominated culture in the first century. Um, that was how uh, God was often uh, described. But for people who have had painful experiences of uh, having a, a father, then it really doesn't help 
when, for example, the preacher says, we're now joined together in the Lord's Prayer, and straight away for them they have a problem. Our Father, who art in heaven. And it is a challenge, and we have to acknowledge that challenge. That's not to say we don't do it, but we just acknowledge that for some people it comes with um, difficulties. But I want to share this morning, very briefly, how we can get around that so that when we talk about God as Father, it's always a positive experience. Because passages like the one I've chosen for this morning speak about the nature of God and what he has done. It doesn't speak about earthly fathers and what they have done. So when the focus is on God who is perfect as our Father, that's a very different scenario to when we're thinking about our earthly fathers, fallible as they are. And many of us who are fathers would like to think that we've done a good job, but we also recognise our fallibility in doing that um, job. So let's look at this Ephesians reading and just pick up a few clues as to why describing God as Father can be a really positive experience, no matter whether you have positive or negative experiences of your earthly Father. So the first thing we note is in verse 3. Praise be to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. He is the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. This is the starting point in the Christian tradition. That God is Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. When we talk about Jesus, when we come to communion, when we're talking about uh, God's Son, Jesus Christ, and there's always that uh, relationship between God the Father and God the Son, because the whole Christian faith is about relationships, so we of course will talk about them in terms of relationships, because that's how we know how to talk about these things, that's how our language comes. Here, right at the centre of the Christian faith, we have this unique relationship between Father and Son, between God the Father and God the Son. Here, God the Father has sent His one and only Son to this earth. Praise be, says Paul, to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. He wants to elevate this relationship so it's not seen in the light of our fallible earthly fathers. But he says, you know, this is something unique. This is God the Father and God who is Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. So don't pitch it in terms of um, comparing it to your earthly fathers, Paul says, because he's far greater than that. He is the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. He takes us into a different dynamic. He takes us into a different um, place when we're thinking about God as Father. He is the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. And of course, Jesus expresses that in a number of places in the New Testament. We see this intimate relationship between Jesus and his Father, especially at significant times, the night before he was uh, crucified. He's there in Gethsemane, and we have this really intimate picture of Jesus the Son meeting with his Father. Father, take this cup from me. It's a beautiful, intimate uh, scene there in Gethsemane. Even on the cross, that relationship is still intact. Father, forgive them, for they know not what they are doing. Right through the life of Jesus, we have this incredible, intimate relationship between Father and Son. And they demonstrate to us what that relationship looks like. And it's far away from our experience of earthly fathers. For in Jesus there is total trust 
There is total obedience and total love. That's the relationship which is at the heart of the Christian faith when we call God Father. One of total trust, total obedience and total love. There we find this perfect, loving Father for us on whom we can totally rely and totally depend. And more than that, says Paul, because he goes on to say, Praise be to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us in the heavenly realms with every spiritual blessing in Christ. This isn't just any ordinary relationship. He's blessed us in the heavenly realms, so that's not in earthly terms, with every spiritual blessing in Christ. What a wonderful Father this is. He doesn't just relate us to us, He blesses us as well. What an incredible image this is. So that's the first thing that Paul says. He is the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. And we need to see the relationship through that lens rather than through the lens of whatever our relationship with our earthly father is. Second thing is, Paul says, he chose us in him before the creation of the world. Does that blow your mind? God chose you before the creation of the world. That's how special you are. That's how special I am. That's how special, if you're listening to this or if you're watching this, you are. But God chose you before the creation of the world. And he chose us to be blameless in his sight and to be holy. God's intention from the creation of the world that we have this relationship with Him as Father. And it's one which is holy and blameless. We see this, of course, most uh, distinctly in the parable of the, what we call the prodigal son. But actually it's just even more about the parable of the forgiving Father. And the way in which beautifully, even though the son strayed and insulted his father by saying, actually, I want my inheritance now, which in other words means, I wish you were dead so I could have your money. But nevertheless, he goes off, he realises that life isn't as wonderful as maybe he thought it was, and he comes back. And he doesn't even have to apologise, we're told in the parable, because the father is there with arms open wide, ready to receive. Blameless. Blameless is what this Father God wants us to be. You know, we have this image of God almost as a sort of a sergeant major who barks out orders and he's very cross with us. That's not what it says here. Not what it says here. We are chosen in him before the creation of the world to be holy and blameless. I hope that blows your mind this morning. That's the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. Thirdly, we're told in verse 5, He brings us redemption through Jesus' blood, the forgiveness of sin, in accordance with the riches of God's uh, greatness. So what we shall share in a few moments illustrates that. Here is God. The Father bringing to us redemption through Christ's blood, which means we can have this incredible relationship with Him. We can be children of God through all that Christ has done for us. What an incredible gift, and how gracious that is that he does that for us. In verse 8 he says that he lavished 
upon us. I love that word in Scripture. He doesn't just do it for us. He lavishes it uh, upon us. Now, I don't know when the last time you had an experience when somebody lavished something upon you. Maybe at this moment you're really struggling to remember such a time. I don't know. But actually when somebody lavishes you with something, whether it be praise or gifts or whatever, you feel almost overwhelmed by it. Maybe there are times when you feel undeserving of it. Well, that's exactly what happens when we come to the table of our Lord. We feel unworthy of it, maybe. We feel overwhelmed by it. But that's God's grace for us. He's lavished His love as our Heavenly Father as we come to communion this morning. And so Paul says to us something about God as Father, which means very different to our human, earthly fathers. And I guess my question for those of you in the building, those of you watching online or listening to the CDs, is why wouldn't you want a relationship with this Heavenly Father, who is the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ? With all that I've just spoken about, why wouldn't you want that relationship? Don't let your human, earthly father's relationship experience put you off. God as Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. God has demonstrated in the flesh and blood in Jesus that he's serious about you. Now are you serious about him? He offers to us a very close an intimate relationship, just as he did with Jesus. That lovely word which Jesus uses uh, towards God in Gethsemane when he says, Abba, Father. That word Abba is the equivalent of what we might say as Daddy. It, it speaks of intimacy. That's what God offers to us this morning, especially at this table. So we stand before God this morning. He wants to lavish upon us his love. John, writing in his epistle, chapter 3, says, See what great love the Father has lavished upon us, that we should be called children of God. The message translates it as this, What marvellous love the Father has extended to us. Just look at it. We're called children of God. Or the voice translation. Consider the kind of extravagant love the Father has lavished on us. He calls us children of God. It's true. We are his beloved children. That's the Father. We are invited into a relationship with this morning. Holy communion. For those of us in the building, is an opportunity to respond to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who lavishes his love upon us. But before we come to that, let us pray. God, our Father, we thank you that you lavish your love upon us. And as we prepare to share in this communion, so we pray that whatever experiences we've had of our earthly fathers, we may be able to come into that relationship with you or renew that relationship with you as our heavenly Father. On this day, we do give thanks for our earthly fathers, whether they are still with us or whether they have passed from this life. We pray for those who have been as a father to us. We pray for those who do not have a, a positive experience of their fathers. We pray for those who cannot be fathers. But 
We pray that for those who need it at this moment, they may have a sense of you as their heavenly Father, meeting their needs according to your will and purpose. We pray for our world. It's so great a need. We pray for our community. And we pray, Lord, that that love which you lavish upon us, we as a church might lavish upon others. Because we've received it first from you, we want to share that with us as part of our mission as a church. As we pray for those in need, we give you thanks for the life of Janet England. And we pray for her family at this moment. May they know your Father's love, bringing you comfort and strength in these difficult times. So Lord, as we come to this table now, prepare our hearts and minds. We offer ourselves to you. We offer to you as well our financial gifts that we have brought either this morning or through our standing orders or maybe online. And we pray that all may be used to your praise and glory. For we ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. And so we say together a family prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. And so as we prepare to share in communion, a hymn which we can reflect on here in the building is a hymn that reminds us that we come to our Father. He is our family. And so in the hymn is, As your family, Lord, see us here.
come to this table in thanksgiving that God is our Father. Let me read that passage again. <clears throat> Praise be to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us in the heavenly realms with every spiritual blessing in Christ. For he chose us in him before the creation of the world to be holy and blameless in his sight. In love he predestined us for adoption to sonship through Jesus Christ in accordance with his pleasure and will, to the praise of his glorious grace, which he has freely given us in the one he loves. In him we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sins, in accordance with the riches of God's grace that he lavished on us. With all wisdom and understanding, he made known to us the mystery of his will according to his good pleasure, which he purposed in Christ, to be put into effect when the times reach their fulfillment, to bring unity to all things in heaven and on earth under Christ. And so we remember that on the night before Jesus died, he took bread, he gave thanks, he gave it to his disciples and he said, Take, eat, this is my body broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And after supper, he took the cup. When he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink from this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it, in remembrance of me. So, Heavenly Father, we remember that your Son, Jesus, died for us. We thank you that you are our Father, and you offer this incredible, lavish love upon us. And so we pray now that you would pour out your Holy Spirit upon this bread, that it may be for us the body and blood of Jesus as we receive from you, we also respond to you as our incredible, loving Father. We recognise, like the prodigal, that we are not worthy of such lavish love. But you stand here with arms open to welcome us and to say, no matter what your past, we have a present and future together. There's a party for every one of us to be thrown because he wants to lavish his love upon us. So Lord, as we come now, may it be for us, Jesus, your Son, you as our Father, lavishing and we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen.
So for our final prayer, let us pray. <clears throat> Father, we thank you that you have fed us in this sacrament. You have united us in Christ. And you have given us a foretaste of the heavenly banquet prepared for all people. May we go in your love as our loving Heavenly Father. Amen. Our last hymn reminds us of that God who is our Father, which we not only praise him for. Father of everlasting grace, your goodness and your truth we praise. We praise him for that. But the next line also, your goodness and your truth we prove. In other words, we don't just say this is a God who is amazing, we also prove it to the people around us by the way which we live our lives. So, those of us in the building, we reflect on the words, and those of you at home, you can sing till your heart's content. Mm-hmm.